Hello, welcome to Project X, and in today's video we'll be discussing the plans for our upcoming paint booth build series we'll be doing here on the channel, talking a little bit about the engineering and design I put into it, and then go over some of the materials we've collected to get this build kicked off. So, without any further ado, let's discuss some of the plans I have here behind me. Here we have my garage. My garage is 24 feet deep by 26 feet wide. It's a double car garage with a single door access over here to the side. Now what we would like to do in the build series is we've already started by installing the 200 amp power panel. We have the 200, uh, 200. We have the 80 gallon air compressor going in over here and then the air dryer for it is going to be sitting over here once done. Now, we're going to add in seven lights in the overhead. This one will be over top of the workbench, and these six will be in the paint booth area. Along the walls, along the back, we're going to add three lights, one, two, three. And then along the side wall, we're going to add three more lights, here, here, and here. That should give us plenty of light. The lights are going to be 4,000 lumens of cool white light, LEDs. Now for the air system, what we're going to have is a downdraft system and how that's going to work is we're going to put three filters up in the overhead here, here and here and then down low in the back wall we're going to put three here, here and here and if you look at this cut section you can get a pretty good idea of how it's going to work. With these three filters in the overhead the air is going to flow down and always be drawn off the floor and then pulled back up in the false wall we're going to build to allow it to escape up in the overhead and out this end of the gable vent. Now, before I discuss the HVAC system, I'd like to discuss the paint booth and how we're going to put a wall right here made of plastic that can be raised up and down and we're going to use the anti-static plastic and that'll define the paint booth area within the garage. Now, this area will be 16 feet wide, 22 foot 6 long, and it's 8 foot high. If you do the math on it, that gives us a total volume of 2,880 cubic feet. Now, a paint booth, in order to be designed for a health, health purposes, you're going to want an air exchange rate of 4 times per minute. Now if you multiply the 2880 times 4 it's going to give us 11,520 cubic feet that we're going to need to do of air exchange rate. So that means we should select the size of 13,000 CFM. Now we're going to get a variable speed fan so that we can adjust it to ensure that we get the proper air speed. Now moving along, what's going to be important is we're going to need a duct size minimum of 46 inches in diameter. And when we run the duct, we're going to tie into the gable up in the overhead, bring the duct system along, angle it, and then build a wall that runs the length here. Here, bring that in here. That'll allow our fresh air intake from outside to come in through here flow through here and then down through here it'll come across the paint booth and into the filters along the back wall once we get to the back wall it'll come up and in the overhead we're going to build another HVAC system that will come up, it will go over and tie into the wall. This one will come up, over and tie into the gable on the other end. And in it we're going to add a fan which is our 13,000 CFM fan. That will pull the air out of the paint booth allowing our air to be exhausted up into the overhead well out of any harm or danger. So that's the general plan of it. 
the one more important thing, well, two important things. We'd like to cover the filters. The filters, we're going to have the 324 by 48 filters. And they're going to be filters made up of two things. One is going to be the spray boost sealing filter. And then we're going to add in a secondary blue media. And that will really help filter it down to a very fine micron. On the exhaust side, we're going to use the Cursed Concertina. Ah, let's try that one more time. The Concertina Spray Booth Filter. And then we're going to add in also an extract filter to sandwich in with it to give it a very, very good filtering system so that when we exhaust it, we won't be harming anyone in the environment or any of the neighbors or anyone in the environment. Coming along. The last and most important thing that I'd like to point out is the airspeed that we figured on. And that's we're going to generate 1.65 feet per second airspeed. And that will allow the paint to dry at the right speed so that if you pull your air across the booth too fast, it's going to create a matte finish along with a number of other little issues that are going to be very hard to avoid when your paint speed, the airspeed is too fast within the booth. And then, of course, if you have too slow a speed, you have the problem of you can't see because there's way too much overspray. So all that being said, let's move on over. I want to show you a few of the quick things that we have going on with the materials. So this here, coming on around, is our Eaton 80-gallon air compressor. It's a dual-stage, single-phase, 175 PSI, compressor that will deliver 31 CFM at 90 PSI if I remember all the numbers right. It's a really nice piece. It comes with the Whisper Quiet system here on the back. One important thing to know when installing this compressor is this filter right here has a 24 inch pool so you got to be very mindful of where you put it otherwise you won't be able to change the filter on it. And filter, speaking of filters, there's a filter and maintenance kit that comes or goes with this doesn't come with it you have to buy it separately and this kit is what's needed in order to maintain the warranty on the pump I point it out because it's a hundred and twelve dollars that comes with these filters the air filters and this oil which is the Eaton proprietary oil that you have to use in order to keep the filter and uh, warranty intact. So, I didn't know that going into it. It's okay, it is what it is. When you buy what you want, you deal with it. So, that goes with that big boy. It's important to have Hello Daisy. Hey Daisy, she come to say hello to everyone. Moving along, we also picked up the Eaton Polar Air Refrigerated Air Dryer. Pretty nice unit. It's got a digital control board here in order to control the air temperature coming out at the tool end. That's important so that you can keep nice consistent air and clean air coming out. It's got the three quarter inch in NPT connections which matches up perfectly with the three quarter inch connection they have over here. That'll work out really well and should flow at a three-quarter inch pipe, 60 CFM, with no problem. Over here, I'll share with you some of the materials. We have the three-quarter inch pipe that we're going to be running for all the airline. We have half-inch pipe for the drains. And then we have various... 45 degree elbows, a few T's for the drains, unions, adapters, ball valves for both on and off to control the system and then the drain lines. And what's not shown here, I don't have, but it is on order, is you notice there's no 90 degree elbows here and that's because the only thing you can seem to get locally is short radius the last thing you ever want to use in your airline is short radius elbows and I've heard the, ar the argument of putting two 90's together but that's just as bad as 
or putting 245s together. Uh, the flow rate when you do the math is just as bad on 290 or 45s as it is one short radius 90. You're way better going with a long radius elbow than you are 245s. All right, moving right along. Let's talk about how to hook up this guy. The first thing I had to do is go and get a 200 amp service panel installed. Now, in my area, you can pull the permit electrical if you're a homeowner, no problem, which is what I've done. And now, I'm not a professional. I'm just showing you these things for entertainment purposes only. I tell you, if you're not comfortable with messing with any of this, please get a, a certified electrician to handle all your work for you. So that being said, the Eaton compressor comes with a wire installation warning. Seven and a half horsepower use, on, use only number six wire when running 50 foot or less to a sub panel. Use number four wire when over 50 foot. Now that's some pretty good size wire. Which is this guy here. Here, let's see. I've peeled a little bit of this back. Focus for us. There we go. Nice little focus. That's some good size wire. That's the wire that'll run from the breaker panel over to the connection box. This guy. Four inch connection box. I had to say get the deepest one you can get. This is the two and an eighth. Also to go with it, the cover that you'll use to secure your outlet. I'm going to use an outlet on this one. I'm not going to hardwire it from panel straight. Instead, what I'm going to do is run it to an outlet. The outlet is, just for general knowledge, it is a 14P TAC 60R. This is the SO 663SO cable that we're going to be using to connect from the compressor over to the outlet. A few miscellaneous breakers we have. Some wire separators for when running the wire to keep it nice and clean. Here we have the staples for both the various size wires we have. Connectors which push into the sides of these knockouts in order to protect the wire. If you don't put those in, you're going to chafe the wire and cut right through it. And we have a few various single gang, two gang boxes for my outlets and we're going to be putting in. Uh, moving along, we're going to be running all 20 amp power outlets, so we have 12-2 wire for that. On the lighting side, we're going to be running LED everything, so we're going to use the 14-2 wire on all of our LED lights. When it comes to the LED lights, we have this, these, Lithuania lighting, LED flat panel lights. This is the panel themselves. Let's see if we can get it in the shot here for you. Nice panel, but one of the real features of the panel is it comes with three settings where you can set it at 3500 K, 4000K or 5000K for the lights. We're going to go with the 4000 cool cool uh cool white. That seems to be the best for picking up on paint. Then you can also adjust the brightness low, medium and high of the luminance. So, great light. I was able to pick it up at one of the local big box stores. They had them on sale to get rid of them, and I got them at a closeout price that you cannot beat. How we're going to mount these, and that'll be in a later series. These are the ceiling bars, T-bars that are used in a false ceiling, or a suspension ceiling. How these are going to work, these will fit here. These little tabs... Actually, let's get this out. These little tabs come over, then they bend out. And then this 
simply fits and snaps right into it like that. So what we're going to do is take this track and secure it to the wall such as so. And then we're going to make it so it'll fasten right into here and snap in and out. And that'll be another part of the series. So moving along, how we're going to do the air filters. This is called an egg crate light diffuser. And how we're going to use those is we're going to take two of these and take the filter media and put the media here between them and then sandwich it together. And then once again, using the track, will simply snap right in just like this and then we also have to work with it 12 foot long strips so that we can work these guys all the way in so that will be a challenge for another video and the last thing I have that I'd like to share with you that we picked up although it's not for the paint shop build yet but it will be future episodes we came across a really nice awada eclipse airbrush really happy with this guy nothing but good things to say about that so anyhow that's about everything i'll take a second we'll scan through the garage so you can see the build of what we're going to do beforehand and how it turns out afterwards so, thanks a lot guys, really appreciate y'all stopping in, seeing what we're going to do and how this all started off. Wait until you see how it ends up, I can't wait. I'm really excited to be laying down some paint, so. Anyhow, thanks for stopping in guys, appreciate your time, talk to you soon.